Hello everyone, welcome to Sub-Zero Labs, otherwise known as my little corner of the garage. This weekend the spring cleaning bug bit really hard and I got very involved in the whole process. Out of the deal I ended up with a empty shelf on which I was able to move all of my test equipment and supplies for the HHO and permanent magnet experiments. So I just want to take you for a really quick tour first and I'll tell you what I've been up to here. Uh, I've got a couple of electrolyzer tanks, the plasma test chamber, the vertical series cell, a little bit of a museum, some of my earlier cells, a bubbler, empty acrylic containers, and some chemicals on the top shelf. Down below I've got uh, supplies and fittings, some radio test equipment, some used microwave oven parts to, if I ever get time, perhaps put together a magnetron RF bombardment chamber waveguide. Here we've got the magical mystery box of miscellaneous equipment and supplies, a fairly large box of assorted tubing, a small box of regular hand tools that I use, and a small box of 316L stainless steel grade plates that uh, I hope to be building a few more cells with. This is the eMachines 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 computer that I have a new 60 gig hard drive in and Linux Zubuntu Linux 6.06 running on it. So hopefully I can get all of the applications that I need running on that machine out here in the garage. Uh, my bin of assorted parts, electronic parts, all sorted out. Now this is what I've been up to. Um, this new stack right here, let me go to macro, is 316L. One, one and seven eighths inches tall, two inches wide and you can see I have it sandwiched in between some pieces of acrylic and spaced with nylon cable ties. I have some goop marine adhesive on the end plates that I smeared. All I did was take some cable ties like this and just put a bead of marine adhesive on the acrylic panel and spread it out with the cable tie to about a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch thick and as smooth as I could possibly get it and then just sandwich it and let it squeeze in between the plates so when everything's dry I'll be able to take the elastic band off pull the cable ties out and everything will be nice and tight and evenly spaced once that's dry I'm going to glue it to this base to give it some some uh, lateral rigidity and some stability when it sits inside a cell the side walls extend below the edge of the plates, so again, this is a freestanding unit. I don't need to worry about suspending it in the middle of the solution just to get some circulation through it. Uh, it's 316L, it's parallel plate design. When I'm finished, you can see these electrodes, which are spot welded, have holes drilled in them already. I'm going to have to re-bore re these out so that they all line up with one another. And I'll do the same thing with these, just bore them out together. Also, I've got some pieces of solid nickel that were sent to me by a very generous individual. These are, these are worth quite a lot. One-eighth inch thick solid nickel. They're about, I want to say, an inch and three quarters wide and trapezoidal in shape, a little bit irregular, kind of difficult to stack up, but I've put together a similar stack right here with some acrylic that's that's uh, drying along both edges. Okay, you can see that. I don't have any acrylic on the end pan on the end plates yet, but once this is dry, the second step will be to glue these into place to give them some electrical insulation in the solution. And again, side walls extend below the edge of the plates. I will glue it to this base to give it additional rigidity and stability in the cell. It was given to me free of charge and I owe it to the gentleman who gave these to me to at least give this a try and I am very interested to see uh, if I can measure any differences in the reactivity of this alloy or of this um, metal compound as it reacts to the various electrolytes that I'm going to submerge it in. And
And over here I've got some electronic parts that I ordered, some LM324s that I'll be using to make some pulse width modulation circuits, any 555 timers for the same, some Schmidt triggers for a voltage controlled oscillator, uh, I've got uh, audio taper potentiometers, so hopefully I will have uh, some interesting experiments going on very soon with all of these various little test cells and videotaping the results for you.